This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by the all new G Flex 2 from LG. Life's good. What's up, everyone? John Brittinger from Techno Buffalo here. CES 2015 is now just a fond memory from about a week and a half ago. There was a ton of ridiculously awesome tech there and a lot of even awesomer car tech. And I talked a lot about that awesome car tech in previous videos. I talked about the Mercedes Benz F015, the Volkswagen Golf R Touch, and the Toyota Mirai. They got all the glitz and the glamour, but there was other ridiculously awesome tech at the car show. So I present to you, friends, the top three most badass pieces of car tech you missed at CES 2015. So as Audi has been for the past few years, their booth is gorgeous at CES, but you had to look hard to find this piece of badassery. Uh, it's Audi's virtual cockpit and an all new MMI, which stands for multimedia interface. That little knob and touchpad they've had for quite a while, but now it's getting a gigantic upgrade. So while a lot of car tech is just crazy conceptual, this one is for realsies and coming on the 2016 Q7. So moms everywhere should be pretty excited. Uh, the car will feature lifelike 3D graphics powered by Nvidia on two stupidly good looking high res screens with one behind the steering wheel that is completely customizable. Uh, a large touchpad with eight programmable buttons on the center console makes inputting addresses and accessing menus just way, way easier. Google Voice recognizes natural speech commands. Finally, just use Google Speech that works so much better uh, for placing calls, choosing song titles, and way bunch more. Uh, the clincher though for me is an optional entertainment system that features two HD tablets, both of which can be used outside the vehicle so you can just take them with you. It never made sense to have things that flip down from the top or built into the headrest when your tablet can do all of that for not only way cheaper, but also you can take it with you. Again, coming on the 2016, all new Q7. Number two, BMW iConnect and Mobility. This is a whole suite of tech. So BMW's long been a thought leader in the auto world, as you probably know. They've created some of the most beautiful cars, the most advanced engines in the entire freaking world, but they haven't always been the most tech forward though, and they're quickly trying to change that and change that fast. We're already seeing that with the i3 and the i8. At CES though, BMW is taking that tech to just like, here's this level, they're going to like this level off camera. Uh, so it's iConnect and Mobility suite of products already allows owners of the i3 electric to incorporate public transportation into their itinerary, which is nice. You can see how long it takes you to get places until you get to drive to the train station. It'll work with you to do that. Uh, but BMW's iRemote app for Android gets even awesome. Our users can now access the best route, be it by car, bus, train, or smartwatch, or of course, on their smartphone. So pretty nice, but what's new this year is a car finder app that you can find your car in a parking lot or garage. So that's awesome. I get lost easily, be really helpful for me. But the most impressive addition is the incorporation of smart TV functionality. This allows users to plan trips uh, at home using digital calendar from a smartphone or personal computer or from a freaking smart TV itself. Uh, BMW's cloud-based servers calculate the best routes to take, including uh, the on foot to the nearest parking lot or bus stop. System will also reconcile travel time between two appointments in different locations, so you have no excuse to be late anymore. It even learns which type of transport the user prefers. Everything is synced to the cloud, so users can access itineraries and directions via their internet connected smart TV, vehicle, dashboard screen, smartphone, or smart watch. So let me build a likely scenario for you for a minute. Let's say you just picked up an i3 and you're all proud of yourself because you're like, boom, my car is electric and it's all connected and it looks pretty sweet, at least I think so. And you're like, hey, you know what? It's electric, I can go to the carpool lane. I don't have to be, I don't have to rush to get myself to work. You're sitting on the couch, playing with your phone, say you just picked up a new G Flex 2 and you're like, oh, the Snapdragon 810 plays games so fast. Oh no, I'm gonna be late for work. So you go in and see how long it can take you to drive to the train station. Your phone tells you it's only gonna take you 14 minutes. You're like, I have to be at work for 45 minutes. I got more time to play some more shooting games. And you're like, oh crap. But then there's gonna be traffic getting from the parking garage to the train station, which is weird, but let's say there is, your phone can tell you how to do that. Uh, so they really tried to make it super easy for you. Uh, integrate into your phone, all my jokes aside, are gonna make life just that much easier for you. And last but not least, number three, Ford Sync 3. And you'll notice what I didn't say, I didn't say my Ford Touch. We've reviewed a ton of Ford vehicles. For the most part, I really like the cars, but the My Ford Touch interface with those four quadrants and a lot of different touch places you gotta strike were 
convoluted to use, difficult to understand, uh, and been powered by Microsoft for years. But Ford listened to its users. That was a big reason that I know a lot of folks you might not have wanted to get a Ford. They've ditched Microsoft now in favor of BlackBerry, and BlackBerry owns QNX, which is pretty stellar. We've seen it demonstrated for the past few years. So demo units on the show floor at CES were really snappy in operation and way more intuitive in layout uh, with simple tiles, similar to those on a cell phone or tablet uh, for key functions that you do all the time. Things like climate control, stereo, and navigation. Graphics aren't as sophisticated looking though as before, but overall Sync 3 appears to be a huge improvement. Uh, you get some things you're used to in your cell phone and tablet like pinch to zoom, pinch to zoom making it just a much easier to use and simpler and most importantly, easy to understand interface. So what do you guys think? I know some of the big car tech got all the glitz and glamour, but there were three really awesome things that happened uh, in the car world at CES 2015 that didn't get the attention they deserved. I wanted to help enlighten you. What are you guys most excited for? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo. See you guys next video. Bye-bye. This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by the all-new G Flex 2 from LG. Life's good. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We love making tech videos here. If you like watching them as much as we love making them and just enjoy playing with the latest consumer electronics gear, check us out. Hit the big subscribe button. We got new videos coming out almost every single day. We also have a channel on Twitch where we play games, oh, sometimes not so well, at twitch.tv slash technobuffalo.